up all of my stuff. Hi, everybody coming in. We're going to get started in a little bit. We're prepping still. <laughs> Mostly me just trying to figure out if I have everything. Okay. Hi, everybody. Happy International Women's Day. Okay. We'd love to hear where people are coming in from, where you're watching. So if you want to put in the chat where you're uh, coming from, we'd love to to say hello. Northern VA, love it. Melba, that's my grandmother's name, hello. California, hello. We're gonna have some California weather, I think soon. <laughs> Montana, hello. from more DC. We love it. Hey. Oh, I need a shaker, don't I? Okay. Yeah. Yes, you do need a shaker. Hi from Chicago. I love Chicago. Let me tell you. Happy International Women's Day, everybody. We're gonna get started in just a couple minutes, everybody. We're just gonna give, um, Give people a little bit more time to come in. From Great Falls, hello. We're happy it's Happy hour time here for International Women's Day. All right. I think AJ will give a couple more minutes and then we'll get started. Great. Hi, everybody. We're we're hearing where everyone's from right now. And we, I would also love if this is, if you're new to NIMWA, this is your first kind of happy hour events. Um, women rule the world. Yes, they do, Laura. <laughs> um, we'd love to hear if, you, if you've just learned about NIMWA, if you're here through AJ, haven't seen one of our amazing happy hour partnerships yet. We've got more coming, don't worry. Oh. AJ is the best. You're right, Melba, you're right. I was always tell her my bar cart now, the cocktails I can create, ooh, so good. <laughs> All right, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. First online event from our charter member. Hi, Nada. I don't want to mispronounce your name, but hello. Thank you for being a charter member of the museum. 
Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, and I am just going to start off by welcoming everyone um, for coming today to celebrate International Women's Day with me and AJ and make some delicious cocktails or just learn some new stuff. Um, I do want to start off uh, because I would be remiss not to mention the passing of Nimwa's founder, Wilhelmina Cole Holiday, at the age of 98 over the weekend. Uh, some of you might know the history of the museum and how amazing of a woman she is and our visionary leader for close to 40 years um, since the museum, well, since she opened the museum. Against tremendous odds and with dedication, drive, and a singular vision, Holiday created a museum to help address the underrepresentation of women artists in museums and galleries worldwide. Her foresight in recognizing women artists of the past and championing women artists of the present by creating a museum was groundbreaking, even revolutionary for that time. It was in the mid 1980s. She had the audacity not just to collect works by women, but also to start this museum. In doing so, she shared her collection with the public and gathered others whose, others whose time, funding, expertise, and works of art bolstered the museum. We wouldn't be here today without her work, so we honor her as well tonight. As she was passionately committed to advocating for women artists around the world, we feel certain that she would be very happy um, and want us to continue our International Women's Day programming. Um, I know she would have especially loved this program uh, and our work here with AJ, who is also doing so much for women in her career as well. So we thank you all for being with us tonight and for honoring Mrs. Holiday's legacy as we move forward. So now on to AJ. <laughs> um, Andre AJ Johnson has been working in the eclectic DMV restaurant scene since first beginning as a hostess at 14 and has done a little bit of everything. Uh, she currently serves as a partner and bar director at Serenata, which I believe she is right now, which she'll talk about, I'm sure. Um, a full service Latin American themed craft cocktail bar in Washington DC's Union Market. The DMV Black Restaurant Week co-founder also curates conversations about representation through white plates, black faces, which doubles as the name of her book, which she is currently working on. So I am going to pass it over to AJ. Carolyn, thank you so much. You always give the best introductions. I appreciate you. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Artful Cocktail Hour um, with Nimwa. Um, my name is Andre AJ Johnson. Feel free. You can pop some questions there in the chat as we're going along through this evening. Carolyn is going to moderate a little bit for me, and she'll sort of throw those back at me as we need, OK? Um, so as she has stated, um, I am a uh, partner and bar director here at Serenata. Uh, we also have another concept called Zoom that we run in the same space. Now we are located in sort of a smaller market space that's all Latin owned businesses uh, called Laco Secha in Union Market. Um, and so what I try to do with any kind of programming um, is bring a little bit of myself uh, into my programs, but also sort of exude what the mission is of what we're trying to accomplish. And when that within that pan Latin um, area of cocktailing, we also find this intersection of women who were absolutely amazing, um, whether it was from a food standpoint, from an art standpoint. Um, and even today, we're going to talk about some female quimadores and agave specialists um, that have been absolutely integral in um, you know, producing some of the world's finest agaves. Um, so today, we are going to have a little cocktail hour celebrating the life and art of uh, one of my favorite but newly found artists. Um, Nimwa likes to challenge us to um, have five women on the ready that are not Georgia O'Keeffe, that are not Frida Kahlo, right? Um, and so I, being a part of these happy hours, um, have sort of challenged myself to figure that out as well. Um, and so we're doing a Latin cocktail box here, at Afro-Latina cocktail box here at Serenata, and Julia Lopez, um, what had to be a part of this. Um, the fact that she was just so dynamic and used a lot of unconventional talent um, of the time uh, really sort of resonated with me because that's how, kind of how I got started with my uh, cocktail career and my restaurant career as well. So let's hop right into just a little bit about uh, Julia Lopez. I'll go through a little bit of information there for those of you who are not familiar with her. All right, um, so Julia Lopez um, was a self-taught Mexican painter whose works depict her childhood home in Costa Chica region of Guerrero State. 
Uh, she was one of eight daughters. Uh, so she left home very early, um, as I probably would have as well. I love my women, but I would hate to share a bathroom uh, with nine other women. Um, she was born in 1936 in a small farming village to parents of African and Amuzgo heritage. She left to go to Mexico City and find a better life. Um, she started working in hotels, um, but as the first picture shows, she was also a very beautiful girl. Um, and she also got a lot of modeling gigs um, with the Escuela Nacional de Pintura, Escultura y Grabado, also known as La Esmeralda, um, which was the premier art school of the time in Mexico City. So um, she was uh, doing a lot of modeling for up and coming artists at the time. And that's sort of how she got into the art world. Um, their influence um, really sort of catapulted her imagination um, and really gave her the courage to go out and not destroy her own style, right? Um, she's most known for um, creating artwork that is of people that she knew, of the color that they were, and depicting them in very bright, beautiful, floral, tropical settings, um, very sort of exalted positions. Um, and that is the type of work that I, I feel very inspired to either create by um, or to see or to look at. Um, because as we know, for a lot of black artists, especially in spaces where we are the only ones there, um, creating of your own color can sometimes be a little bit radical. Uh, so critics uh, called her work, uh, she, I guess she was a part of the um, Generation de la Ruptura, uh, which means to sort of create a rupture or a break from the traditional style. Um, and so today we are going to create two different cocktails using unconventional ingredients in unconventional ways and creating something extremely beautiful just as she did, okay? So that is my little sort of foray intro into um, Julia Lopez. Um, she was described by her lover at the time, Rafael Coronel, who happens to be the son or was the son-in-law of Diego Rivera. Um, as someone who let the art exude from her. Um, her stuff wasn't forced and it, it really did show the joy and beauty of being a woman in the time and being strictly yourself. Um, and so that is what we are going to create or at least try to mimic and create in our cocktails this afternoon, all right? So we are gonna start off with our first cocktail. It is Monday and Mondays for me mean martinis always. So we are gonna start off with the French kiss in Jalisco. Now, the state of Jalisco um, is generally where you'll find a lot of your agave um, production that is going to be made into tequila. All right, so I asked you all to grab a bottle of tequila. I am going to use Mijenta. Uh, one of my partners actually here at Serenata is one of a part is a partner in this tequila. Um, also, they do have it is female made, um, and she's also a part owner. So this is amazing. We need our Saint Germain, our French elderflower liqueur. Again, we're French kissing in Jalisco. We have our Sailor's Gentian Aperitif. Now this one is kind of a tough one to find. Um, if you have a vermouth or if you have a comparable Gentian Aperitif uh, like Sue's, that can work as well. You just might have a different color, but that's okay. And then we're gonna finish off with our Dolan Blanc, which is essentially like the Dolan Dry that they do, but without the wormwood. So it's much cleaner and it's just a natural aromatized wine, okay? So for this, we need a mixing glass or the bottom of your shaker tin can work as well. A bar spoon, some ice, and our coupe glass, okay? Make sure we have a lemon on the ready with a peeler or a paring knife. Um, I am going to ask you to do a little bit of garnish work today. That's always my favorite part. Um, and so feel free, um, snap some shots of your cocktails, tag us, Women in the Arts. Uh, you can tag me at White Place Black Faces um, and have some fun with it. Don't be, don't be shy. This is all about creating and figuring out what you can make at home as well. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna start off with our tequila, our Blanco tequila, one and a half ounces, okay? So I've got my little jigger here. If you have a measuring cup of some sort or a jigger, a bar, a bar jigger, that's great. So one and a half ounces right in. And then for our French ingredients, our Saint Germain, our Dolan Blanc and our Sailors, it's going to be half an ounce, okay? So just right into our mixing glass. Now make sure that you do not put any ice into your mixing glass first. 
we don't want to over dilute our martini. And I thought this was a really fun one to start with. Obviously, again, it is Martini Monday. However, you don't generally see tequila done in a martini variation. Again, we're going a little bit off the book, non-traditional, being a little bit more unconventional in the way that we're drinking this, right? But tequila was produced in order to be sipped, not to be really shaken and then hit with the lime at the end of the salt. So this is actually um, closer to the way that your agave producers are meaning for you to drink it. Okay. Let's go ahead and add ice to our mixing glass. Yeah, beautiful. And then I've got my little bar spoon here to stay on theme. I have my little calavera on top. <laughs> All right. And so we're gonna take the back of our spoon, which is the rounded part, Make sure that goes right up against the inside of our vessel and put it all the way down to the bottom. Our pointer finger, middle finger on the back and our ring finger and pinky finger on the inside as if we're gonna hold a pencil, okay? And just stir back and forth. Make sure that all the ice is moving at the same time. Uh, Elizabeth, I hope that we can make Martini Monday a regular webisode. That would be pretty dope. I'm with it. So we want to stir for about 30 to 35 rotations. Touch your vessel. It should start to ice up, but ice up very slowly. We don't want to bruise this. A good way to tell if your cocktail is ready, if you want to just spoon a little bit out, put it on the back of your hand. If it burns, it's not ready. If it doesn't burn, it's ready. So I'm going to give mine like two or three more rotations. Perfect. Let's take our strainer and we're gonna strain right into our martini or coupe glass. But again, this is quarantine still, we're in a pandemic. You drink out of whatever you like, no judgment here. And strain right in. Okay. Beautiful. Now what I want everybody to do is just give that a little nose. You get a really nice, beautiful freshness from that cocktail. Now we're not gonna drink it just yet. We're gonna push that to the side. We're gonna grab our lemon. And what I want you to do is peel off a really nice thick peel, okay? Really nice thick peel. Now take your hand, just put it on the edge there and pinch a little bit of that outside rind right onto your hands. Those oils that just came out are what we want on top of our drink, for sure, 100%. So let's go ahead and bring our cocktail back to the center for a second. And let's banana hammock, like I call, what I call it, the outside of the rind facing down over our cocktail, squeeze, pinch over, and you should see those natural oils express onto your cocktail, okay? Now give that a nose, All right? That St. Germain sort of turns into a little bit more of a cucumber, right? There's a little bit more of a rosemary happening. It's a, it's a really nice, uh, fun way to change the aromatics on your cocktail. Now. For the, for the hard part, because um, I decided that'd be a great idea to put this cocktail on my menu and cut lips as garnish because it's French kiss. So you all are gonna try making lips on this cocktail. Now, if you don't wanna try it, that's fine. You can always do just a very simple parallelogram. Geometry was never my thing. I learned that uh, shape during quarantine, parallelogram, boom. You can just pop that right in. You've got your twist. If you'd like to try the lips, let's go ahead and see about doing that, okay? So with your peel facing up, all right, the yellow side up to the air, let's take your knife and we're gonna create just a heart shape around the top to create the lips. Boom. And I'll flip mine up in just a moment so that you can see what I'm doing here. I was never the biggest artist in the world, but I think I found my creativity behind the bar. There you go. All right, so it looks like a little moustache. And then we're just gonna round out the bottom with a little bit of a bend. There you go. Okay. So now we are gonna actually make the slice in the lips so that we can hang it on the edge of our glass talking head situation here, right? And then with the 
white part into your cocktail and the yellow part facing up. Just go ahead and pop that right on the edge of your glass. Boop. Oh, mine's not staying very well. Ah, there she is. There you go. And now you are French kissed in Jalisco. And when you look down on it, it should look like the lips are kissing the glass. All right. So we've got that really strong um, presence of the tequila, right? It's our base, right? But again, we just softly kissed it with other aperitifs to make a delicious agave martini. So cheers. All right. So first cocktail, let's uh, If I could play music right now, I, yeah, we, this, is, this is the one right here. I love this cocktail. Again, I think when we think of agave, it always seems to be margarita, margarita, margarita talk. Um, and agave is so much more dynamic. Um, and I really do hope that you um, sort of take this and try to evolve it with different flavors, right? It doesn't have to be Saint Germain. You can add in different types of syrups and things like that to make them a little bit more palatable for your flavor profile. Um, but this is just a really good base here um, as well to just start your drink. Um, I think there was somebody who said something about the um, measurements being in the chat. Yeah, if AJ, if you want to say them real quick, I'll I'll write them in, um, and then I'll 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 follow ahead more. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> so it's uh, one and a half ounces of a blanco tequila. Oh, keep going. I'll oh, follow along. Gotcha. 0. 0.5 ounces of Saint Germain. 0. 0.5 ounces of Dolan Blanc and 0.5 ounces of Sailor's Gentian Aperitif. Okay, now that one, I'm gonna have to find the spelling of, but I will find it. Yeah, no worries. It's like, it's like, it's like S-A-L-E-R apostrophe S. Okay. Yeah, no problem. And yeah, I just wanna make sure you have all these so you can definitely do these, uh, do these at home. And again, there will be follow up on these. So if you have any questions, I'll put my information. You can always you know, hit up Nimwa. They'll be able to get in contact. Hmm. So Jessica, where can you find Sailor's Gentian in DC? Batch 13 is one of my favorite stores in the world. They have a lot of great um, aperitifs. Um, also, um, I believe in Union Market, there's a store called Vitus. They also carry Sailor's. Um, it's definitely more of a specialty product. Um, Potomac Wine and Spirits carries it as well. Um, it'll be in the vermouth aisle, like next to your like Martini and Rossi and even like your Dolans and things like that. It'll be in that, in that category. Okay, so now that we're drinking on our martini to get us started off, I wanted to walk you all through just a little bit of like my agave 101 tips um, because they are super, super important. Uh, uh, tequila can be a little bit difficult, I feel like. Um, we tend to just lean towards the Jose Cuervo. We tend to lean towards the Sousa because we know it. Um, but in all of that um, sort of market brand awareness, we are also not actually drinking tequila, which is making us not feel good or not like it or whatever the case may be, um, or know that that's gonna lead into a terrible night. So quick tips, Agave 101. You wanna take your bottle, go ahead and take your bottle, make sure that the top is on that nice and secure and flip it upside down. Like literally when you're in the liquor store, just take it off the shelf and flip it upside down and shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Now in that tequila bottle, you should see, it almost looks like a bubble bath. You see lots of little bubbles in there. The longer they stay, the bigger they are. That means that the parallels are intact and that the natural oils from the agave are still in your tequila, which means that they have properly cut out the bad heads and the bad tails, All right? Yeah, so shake that up, Carolyn. Yeah. And you should be able to see the bubbles there. The longer they stay and the bigger they are, the better the tequila, okay? The next thing that you wanna look for on that bottle, you say, okay, those lasted really long. Hmm. Then you look at your bottle, make sure that it says 100% agave. Now, for those of us who have picked up a Jose Cuervo bottle, that have picked up a Sousa bottle, um, yeah, it will not say generally, unless it's a different production, 100% agave. They also will not be able to legally say tequila. It'll say Jose Cuervo gold. It'll say Jose Cuervo silver um, because the Mexican government uh, rules agave uh, much stricter, if not as strict as the French do wine, right? So 
make sure that it says 100% agave or 100% blue agave. Then you're gonna flip your bottle over take to the back and you're gonna look for two numbers. And mine, mine is on the front actually. They want it right there. Gnome, there's a gnome number. So it says N-O-M with four numbers next to it. And then you have CRT. CRT is the government organization that regulates your tequila. So it is certified, regulated, boom. And that gnome number tells you what distillery it was made in. So generally the more expensive the tequila, that will be made, that will be the only one made in that gnome number. Sometimes um, with a lot of brands, you know, the agave is processed and then it's made through different, um, it's made along with different other tequilas. Um, so you may like other tequilas that are on there. And there is actually a gnome tracker app that you can download on your phone and you can type in your little gnome number and see all of the other agaves that are made and distilled in that distillery, which is really cool just to see if you like anything else from that, um, that is produced that same way. So those are the things that you're looking for before you even uh, pick up the bottle, before you even buy it, before you even purchase it, right? You haven't even tasted it, you haven't smelled it, no nothing, okay? Now, yes, people will look at you crazy, um, but my rule of thumb is that if I don't know the spirit and I can't see through the bottle, I'm not gonna spend my money on it. Not off of one, not off of one chance. Um, agave producers are extremely uh, discerning about what they put in the bottle and they want you to know that they put, they did the good thing, they did the right thing. Um, and so parallels are extremely, extremely important um, to being able to discern that. Now, what I want you to do now, which is even crazier than taking a bottle off the shelf and shaking it around. Once you've bought the bottle, you bring it home, so you got your hand and put a little bit in your hand, All right? And rub your hands together. Now, alcohol distilleries have been producing a lot of hand sanitizer as of late, right? Because they've had to, to really sort of keep up with demand and sort of stay in business too. Now, your best agave producers, that should roll right into your hands like baby oil. If your hands start to stick together, that means that there's too much ethyl and methyl content in there, so your hands will dry faster, which means that there's too much of the bad alcohol left, right? It should really just whoop, roll right in. No burning, no nothing, right? So at your next mezcal or tequila tasting, uh, don't stick out your glass, stick out your hands, and those producers and those sellers, those brand ambassadors, they'll be like, oh, you know your stuff, because always your hand first before you put it in there. Okay, so those are the tips of the day, right? You can definitely find 13, $14 bottles um, that are absolutely delicious and I would 100% stand behind um, and that are so much better than like a 40 or $50 uh, tequila that you don't really know anything about. So uh, if you're going for those, if you're looking for those identifiers, it should be okay. All right, so that's my, that's my agave spiel. Um, I do that as an actual public class. So if you guys ever wanna just like get into tequila, we can do that as well. Um, so we are going to head into our last cocktail. I feel like there was a question about distillers that was up there in the chat. Do you have any local distillers from Rose? Um, local distillers that I absolutely adore. Uh, Republic Restoratives, I think is doing a really good job. Uh, they stick to what they know and they source what they don't know or can't do well um, and really just sort of put their all in it when it comes to uh, distilling those spirits and, and, and barrel aging them to perfection. So definitely them, uh, Don Chichio and Feely, uh, for sure, I love them. Um, I think Green Hat just as being an introduction into the market for DC distillers, they're doing a fantastic job. Um, I will say that I'm not a huge fan of many rum um, distilleries here in the area or um, people that are trying to do tequila, uh, just because I know that it's, we don't have the water here in DC to actually produce that high level of quality of spirit. Um, and so it's a little bit more difficult. There are people that I love, absolutely love, um, but don't necessarily have on my shelf because of that. So there, there, then there's that. Um, thank you for popping that in, the Mijenta. Great, great, great. Yes, and Republic of Shores is, is woman owned. Um, and Julianne, you said you used the Sue's and it was, not ruined. I like that. I love that so much because that's a very, that's a, that's a big one. That's a very big flavor profile. I'm glad that all those flavors still worked. Okay. So we have 
one more cocktail to do, all right? I hope, uh, you know, you drink it fast, but not too fast. Because again, remember, it's a martini, so alcohol. Mm. <laughs> and our next one, uh, the La Ruptura. This is where we get to have so much fun. Um, so I hope everybody was able to climb cactus. If you were, amazing. If not, it's okay. You're going to have a slightly spicier cocktail, so you can add a little bit less jalapeno if that's the case. Um, but what I wanted to do here was obviously satiate that idea of giving the margarita, but actually taking a product called the European Charanda Blanco, right? What is this in this blue bottle? Okay, uh, you can use Blanco tequila for this if you'd like. Um, if you weren't able to find the Charanda, and that's okay. Uh, if you were able to find the Charanda, please feel free to just try a little bit of it. Um, this is actually rum from Mexico. Nobody thinks of Mexico doing rum, right? Um, so it is not an agave spirit. It is a 50% molasses, 50% uh, sugar cane um, uh, product uh, from the northwest of Mexico. Um, absolutely beautiful stuff. Um, it's got a little bit of a sweetness to it. It has less of that sort of like alcoholic hit. Um, and it's got a little bit of florality that's super, super nice. Um, and it's gonna play beautifully into this. And I wanted to use that um, to sort of, you'll see the cocktail when we finish it, obviously, but you will also <clears throat> get an idea of that florality content and how it plays back into all of Julia Lopez's uh, artwork because she uses flowers in just about everything. All right, so for this cocktail, we need our shaker tin. Okay, I have a two shaker tin. If you have a three, that's fine as well. Make sure we have our jigger on hand. Okay, let me get those out of the way. You have a jalapeno. We're gonna go ahead and slice that maybe into four slices or so, okay? You'll need a whole lime for this. Make sure you have a paring knife because we're gonna cut that lime up just a bit. We'll need our lime juice. Our fresh pressed watermelon, okay? And if it's not fresh pressed, I understand it's March. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> All right. I've got our cactus here. Now I go and buy cactus right up here at this place called Mexican Fruits. It's been like a savior for me. Um, I found some of the most amazing things that I would never really have access to if I wasn't right here um, in the Union Market District. So they sell cactus and aloe and we cut that up fresh and then freeze it um, and use it in our smoothies and cocktails here. All right. And lastly, we need our pineapple juice and our mango nectar, okay? You can use fresh mango juice, uh, but fresh mango juice oxidizes very, very quickly, uh, which is why we like to use the nectar here, okay? For this, we will need a rocks glass. All right. And now with our rocks glass, this is actually where we begin the cocktail, okay? So if you've ever seen, like you get in your cocktail and say, oh, do you want salt or no salt? Um, make sure that you're always rimming your cocktails first because you can't add it after. <laughs> I've made that uh, mistake several times in my career. So that is where we are going to start. We are going to start at the beginning with rimming. Can you substitute, Susan, can you substitute another juice for the pineapple juice? 100%. Um, I would say you can probably go all mango if you want to go all mango. Um, I, I don't think I've tried it not without pineapple, um, but I don't think that that will be, I don't think that would be any issue, no. It's really just about creating that, that unctuousness and that sweetness without having to add more sugar to the cocktail. Uh, tips on how to do those, undo the Boston shakers. Okay, yes. So you have the, three, that's the three shaker one, right? With the thing on top. So what you wanna do, even on mine, there's gonna be a line, and we'll go through this when we shake, where you actually wanna take the heel of your palm and hit right along the lines. When you shake your tin, this will all be frosty, but it will, because science, it will not be, <laughs> right? It will not be frosty from where your tins lie. So the same thing actually applies when you're using a three tin um, shaker, shaker set as well that has just a little cap on top. You can actually bump it from the bottom, right? Set your cocktail aside and then separate it that way. Or if it's still together, if you run just a stream of room temperature water, just right along the top, it won't mess with your cocktail and it'll, boop, 
loosen it, let it expand a little bit, and then you should be able to pop it, okay? But we'll go through knocking those off and just knock it off, okay? I urge you guys, please don't use like the glass and then the metal, it can break, don't use it. Okay, <laughs> awesome. So let's actually start with our lime. We're gonna start by rimming our cocktail here. Boom, have a nice glass. And what I want you to do is just cut a slice out of your lime, just one slice. You don't need to do too much. And then fold the slice in half, all right? We're gonna take our glass. And now here at Serenata, we go up and down because it creates this really cool effect when you put it in the togarashi. But at home, if you like your stuff all the way around, wherever you want the lime, or sorry, wherever you want your togarashi, you're gonna want that all the way around, okay? If you just want it on the half, you can just do half, right? In a, in a commercial setting, we really want to give you the option, but we really still wanna garnish your cocktail really pretty. <laughs> so you wanna take your togarashi and just like put it on a flat surface, a plate, anything like that, just like that. AJ, will you explain real quick what togarashi is for those who might not know? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Um, so togarashi is actually a Japanese uh, spice mix. Uh, so sesame seeds, black sesame seeds, uh, cayenne pepper, um, a little bit of espalette as well. Um, and what you get there is you end up with more of a toasty and a little bit yeasty uh, sensation, which then actually cools down the heat uh, from the pepper mix. Uh, you know, when you have hot spicy foods, you need a little bit of like bread right, to sort of mitigate that spice. Um, and this plays absolutely perfect there. It gives just the right amount of heat because again, we're adding in jalapeno to the cocktail. Um, I do not suggest rimming um, a lot of cocktails with actual salt. Um, that notion came from the actual use of sal di gusano um, and uh, sal di chapelin, uh, which is worms and cricket salt. Uh, those are the worms and crickets that were actually in your agave while they were being toasted. They got pulled out and then mixed in to make a chili salt. Um, and actually I have some of that here. Wow, okay. Yep. And so those worms, we all like sweet stuff, right? Mm -hmm. The worms get in, they take them out, all sustainable stuff. Um, and so you have a little bit of a agave worm there. Um, and then once it sort of got translated to the US, uh, we just have regular kosher salt. Um, it actually throws off the flavor profile. So you want something a little bit more of a kick um, with a little bit more dimension and not something that's going to dry out all of the flavors are of our mouth. For Great, that. thank you. Yeah, of course, cool. So once we've got our togarashi right there, okay. Wherever you put your lime, go ahead and run that in your togarashi. Just wherever you put it. Okay. Now we like, again, if you get a margarita or anything similar at Serenata, you'll see ours just have a nice strip right down the side. That's good. Yep, there you go. And that way you can discern whether or not you want some salt. You don't want some salt. It's too much. It's not enough. You know what I mean? Um, and have fun that way. So once we've got our glass rims, that can go and be set aside. We are done with the rim. Let's start making our cocktail. All right. So to start, we have our one and a half ounces of our Sharonda Blanco. One and a half. This is a really good starting point for a base spirit. Right in there. Again, if you've never tried this before, it's your first time picking it up, I urge you to try it on its own. It's so delicious. Okay. Then we're going to hop right into our watermelon. Uh, we press this at the store three times a week. It's, uh, it's a pain, but it's so worth it. Uh, it. It really is so worth it. One and a half ounces of your fresh pressed watermelon. And we're gonna go right to our mango nectar or our tamarind or um, you know whatever, whichever juices you'd like to sort of highlight. Like if you don't like pineapple, things like that, you can do a full ounce. But for me, for the regular spec, we're gonna do a half ounce of our mango. Right in. We got a Mexican rum, fresh crushed watermelon juice, mango nectar, and we're gonna add another half an ounce of pineapple juice. 
And why these fruits is that, as you can see, as most regular margarita menus or, or uh, recipes will tell you, you need to add in sugar. We're not doing that here. We're gonna use all fresh natural sugars with high content uh, fructose, uh, natural fructose in order to make this cocktail. Work. Then we have our lime, all right. 0.25 ounces, sorry, 0.25 ounces of our lime juice. Uh, Nancy, I haven't been to Jalisco. I was supposed to go in uh, November and I was supposed to go in December and it never really worked out, um, but I need to go. Um, actually, again, like one of my business partners being an owner in, in Mijenta, he's been trying to get me down there to sort of see all the facilities and things like that and, and meet, meet the whole team. So I will be going this year, I promise, soon. Yes, soon. Um, and I'll definitely be doing the Agave Trail, the Mezcal, Mezcal Trails and things like that in Oaxaca. It's gonna be a whole big excursion when I get back to Mexico. <laughs> all right, so our last and final, oh, sorry, not last, sorry, second to last ingredient is going to be our jalapenos. Now, this is the tricky one. And I feel like in 13 years behind the bar, I think I figured out and mastered how to use jalapenos properly. Uh, do not steep your jalapenos in your alcoholic spirits. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Um, it'll take out all of the uh, actual like natural flavoring that you want um, in your spirits and then just leave it to be the spicy mess. You don't want it, all right? So take your jalapeno, we're gonna dice that. You wanna give yourself about four slices. Okay. Now, what I like to do, and again, don't use your fingers for this, use your knife. If you have four slices, two of those slices, push the seeds out of there. The seeds are what carry the spice. Jalapenos aren't that high up on the Scoville, but if you get one that's super spicy, we all know what happens there, right? So those seeds are what actually carry the spice, but we really want the vegetal characters. So two of them with seeds and two of them without seeds. And just put that right into your shaker tin. Awesome. All right, so four total slices. If you're not into spice, just take the seeds out of all four. And now lastly, the craziness. Who has had, and you can just put it in the chat, Who's had cactus in a drink before? Nope. <laughs> we want to pop about three or four pieces of our diced nopal into our uh, into our shaker tin. Okay, it's a really fun ingredient to use. Again. You use it very similarly to the way that you would use, uh, oh, and from California. So Cheryl said, no, I'm from California. That's interesting. Um, you use it very similar to the way that you would use aloe. Uh, keep it frozen um, to keep all the properties uh, within it. Uh, once it starts to melt, uh, things start to, ooze, like the the, uh, the juice oozes out. <laughs> um, and then none of that cooling effect actually hits your cocktail. And we need that cooling effect because we're gonna shake up some spice. Okay, so now that we've got all of our ingredients into our cocktail shaker, let's go ahead and add ice. A good amount of ice there. Now make sure if you have a three piece tin. Uh, so Leslie, you want about three to four pieces of diced cactus. Yeah, no problem. So if you're using a two tin shaker like myself, you're gonna fill that all the way up to the top. That's why I always like to build in the short side because that's actually how much ice you need to properly dilute with the proper shape one cocktail. If you are using a three piece tin where you have just the one big bottom, fill it up halfway. There should be a break where it actually starts to straighten out. So you wanna actually fill that ice up to that break line right in the middle. And that should, it's about right there, okay? So once we've got our ice in there, we're gonna lock up our tins. Now when we shake, okay, this is Carolyn's favorite part. <laughs> when we shake, we want our non-dominant hand, so I'm right-handed. That one's gonna go on top, but our non-dominant hand, my left, is gonna go on the bottom. Never shake this way with your hands here, 
because you might pull it apart and you're also going to warm up your cocktail. You don't want that. You want to be super cold. So on the bottom, right, touching as little as possible. On the top, touching as little as possible. Now, this one always gets us, this one always gets everybody, I promise. Now, we don't shake out. We don't shake up. We push and whip, right? It's definitely more of a whip. So make sure that your tin is perpendicular to the, sorry, parallel to the floor, but perpendicular to yourself, right? The short side is closest to you. And what you're gonna do is whip it out and push. So you hear that ice hitting all four sides of your tin. Are we moving, are we moving, are we moving, are we moving? And then when you get good at it, Yeah, yeah, and it's just really about that rhythm, all right? <laughs> so as you can see, my tin is nice and frosty, right? You should have that nice frostiness, and then it stops immediately where your tin's locked. That's your point of access, that's your point of release, okay? So take the heel of your palm, don't be scared, it won't hurt. Just right at that line. Of course, yeah, of course, I say it doesn't hurt. Karen was like, oh. <laughs> So is your top popped on there really tight? Yes. Okay, so you, even your little one? Oh, no, that's open. Hey, that's a, yeah, there you go. Because that's your trainer. No. Oh. You have a three piece. Listen, that's I'm not the bartender here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only here to help, guys. I'm here yeah. to help. All right, open that up. Oh, wow. Smell that. Smell that in your tin. That's beautiful. Okay, let's go ahead. Now I'm gonna use a really beautiful two by two cube. If you don't have a two by two or a whiskey ice, that's totally fine, okay? Awesome, all right. Yeah, so if you got a whiskey cube, that's great. Put that in first. If you don't have a whiskey cube, don't pour it over the ice, pour the ice in after, okay? Let's give that a good shake and pour right in. So you have this really beautiful pink mauve. Some of you might, all might have red, like super red. Um, it all depends on how fresh your watermelon juice is. If it's real watermelon juice or not, I think this color, especially once it starts to separate, is absolutely gorgeous. You have a really nice, beautiful red cocktail in there. Nice and pink. Boom. Gorgeous, gorgeous. All right. Let's pull that lime back. And then we're just going to cut one more beautiful thin wheel. All right. And again, if you look at that togarashi on your glass, this beautiful green is a wonderful accent and highlight to that. And if you are able to have edible flowers, I'm gonna show you how we kind of do it here, is that we try to pop on, boop, just a little bit of color. So we've got some florality action happening there. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, so Leslie, I think I've got like some violas. Uh, you can use uh, you can use uh, rose petals that haven't been touched with pesticide. Uh, there are edible rose petals out there. Uh, marigolds are always a good one and very very on brand, as marigolds are the flower um, representative of Dia de los Muertos, um, and calendula is a very big flower uh, in Latin America, including Mexico. Um, so you can use little flowers and sprinkle them on and things like that. Uh, but that is La Rutura. Yay, cheers. cheers. Let's give that a. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yummy. It's that's just so good. Let me show to this image from Lopez, which is perfect for this drink. 
look at that. I think 100%. Yeah. I think you got every color. Mm -hmm. yep. I just wanted to mention that real quick. No, thank you for mentioning it because this is, um, that was, that was, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is delicious. I love this cocktail so, so, so very much. Um, you can also, instead of doing all the steps, you can definitely um, put the pineapple or the mango or whatever juices you want with your pineapple and no pollen like a blender. And you can blend it up there and you can have some on hand ready to go. I do make a little syrupy situation with that. Um, and that way it just sort of saves time. Um, and that lasts for a very long time. If you wanted to sort of hold on to those things for a little bit and you don't know what to do with the fresh ingredients, uh, blending them up and then fortifying them with some sugar is always a good way to save any of your fresh fruits and veggies. Um, if you, uh, you know, bought a whole bunch of stuff and don't know what to do with it as a good way to preserve it instead of trying to freeze it, um, or use it in ways that you shouldn't. Um, and so that I believe, wow, I was right on time too. I am so good. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That was so fun though. Um, I just wanted to say thank you all. Um, happy International Women's Day. I saw there's somebody in here from Italy. Like, thank you so much. Like that means a lot. Um, and it has been absolutely fantastic um celebrating this day with you all. I've been looking for this. As soon as Carolyn said you want to do this, I was like, yes, I want to do this. Um, <laughs> so please um cheers to you. You know, let's go out, let's support cheers. some female artists, female businesses. Mm. This Everything. is wonderful. Thank you so much, AJ. Yet again, you've created such an amazing cocktail too, inspired by women artists. And I'm excited to enjoy this. And I will say to all of our attendees, if you want to, we have one more program for International Women's Day, which is a perfect next after you have your cocktail. We have a live performance by local singer songwriter, Courtney Dow. We're live streaming it. I'm just going to put the link in the, in the chat. If you want to join us, you can also find it on our Facebook and all of our socials as well. She's really amazing. And it's just a great, I'm going to enjoy this cocktail. I'm going to listen to some music and I'm going to celebrate women. So thank you, AJ, for doing this and, and for introducing us to a new artist. I personally knew very little about Lopez. So it's just, just another thing you've taught me. <laughs> I learned so much on those uh, on those happy hours that we do, um, and so if, if anything that I could do to sort of give give back to that um, art has been a very big part of my life. Um, I've sort of been on the adjacent of of the art world, and so I uh, any way that I can take my craft and put it together with some amazing uh, art is that's all I kind of want to do for the rest of my life. So well, thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> yes, we're happy to have you. AJ will be on future happy hours uh, with us. So look out for that in your email for upcoming ones. Um, and that just so everyone knows that happy hour also focuses on those happy hours focus on one artist as well for their birthday. But we learn about some more. AJ creates a cocktail. It's a great time. It's a great time. So I think that is it for us. Um, I will make sure to share questions and comments if we miss them with AJ. Um, and so we would love for you all to connect with her and happy International Women's Day, everybody. Cheers. Thank you, AJ. We'll talk to you soon Ooh, for your I'll next you soon, creation. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Thank Bye, everybody. everybody. Bye. Cheers.